sure to get some shakes in the other angle there. And then back to this one. Get through there, boy. Very, 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 I'll say very even one more time. Very liberal. Cleaning things out slowly but surely. I'll go with you. Since you're, uh, you're already anxious to get out of this thing, it uh, seems. Whoa. See this little guy just leap onto the glass? What you doing? Just being curious? But what a project like this really takes is it takes a little bit of creativity and it takes a little bit of willingness to get out of the way of Mother Nature and just kind of let her tell your hands what to do. On this video, we are going to be building from scratch this 12 by 12 by 18 vivarium. It's going to be a little slice of rainforesty nature that we're creating. And I think that it's going to be the perfect complement to the plant room behind me. So without further ado, Let's get going. Let me show you what we're going to do first. Let me, let me try and take this step by step. This ecosystem that we're building is going to come complete with a waterfall. So what we're going to do first is we're actually going to build a little compartment back here, right in the back corner for our, uh, for our pump to go so that everything's kind of nicely hidden away. And if you're a little bit confused on what I'm trying to do here, you'll understand in a second. This is a piece of of what they call PVC uh, board or marine board or anything like that. And the absolute best thing about this stuff is that it's waterproof. We can cut it really easily with a blade and we can create things like little compartments and stuff in the back of our little vivarium ecosystem that we're creating right back over there. Important fact, I just changed out that blade. You always want to use a sharp blade. That's the one thing that I actually didn't do for a long time is I never used to use a sharp blade. I would just kind of think that the knife came with the blade forever. Straight cut all the way down. All right. Remember I said that this ecosystem that we're building is going to come complete with a waterfall? Well, this little false kind of background that we're making for this thing is going to need a way to pass water through it. So we have to cut just a little hole right down here. When you hear that cracking is when you know you've got a good blade on your, on your cutter. You'll be able to pop that thing right out of there. Beautiful. Gonna make it all the way around with one squeeze. Perfect. And now that we've got everything siliconed up, we've got that screen in place, it's time to actually get it in to the ecosystem that we're building. Just to hold this thing in place. Perfectly. Spread it out with your fingers. This kind of helps fill in all of the air pockets. Makes it look a little bit cleaner, but it doesn't matter how this looks because... Well, there's going to be all sorts of stuff covering this. There's going to be an entire background on top of this thing. Like I said before, there's going to be living plants. There's even going to be living critters living in this little slice of the rainforest that we're creating back here. So now that we've got that little section divided, so we can put our pump back there and kind of hide all the cords and everything nicely. It's time to get into here and start to build a little bit more of the structure that we're gonna have in this, uh, in this ecosystem. And to create that structure in the bottom of the vivarium, we're gonna use something called filter foam and uh, you know, a good old fashioned pair of scissors. Mm. Yeah. Maybe we'll do one more just to terrace it. Is that what you call that, terracing? Creating little stairs. Again, all this stuff is gonna be covered by background in the end. Right now we're just trying to create the structure of this ecosystem. So I'm sure you've seen this stuff used before, but we're gonna lay our wood down here. We're gonna to start to sort of get, you know, just sort of wiggle things into place. And then we're gonna use this great stuff foam to sort of adhere all of that into place. Now we're at the point in the process where we're gonna pick our, our centerpieces of wood. So what I always like to say is that it's important to give yourself constraints. So I've got a little bit of of wood here to choose from. I've got five or six pieces. Again, this is a 12 by 12 by 18. So we don't need a ton of wood, but I do like to have a lot of these different textures incorporated in the background. So I do like to use a pretty decent amount of wood in my vivarium builds or my terrarium builds. And again, the main point there is it's always important to give yourself constraints. So pick, you know, get yourself, you know, 10 or seven or whatever amount of pieces of wood that you think you might need. Look at them, look at what you got. Pick a couple pieces that you're gonna use as centerpieces. And uh, at some point you just have to make the decision to kind of stick these into the terrarium. Make sure to get some shakes in the other angle there. Just in case we feel like using that one. And then back to this one, of course. 
Pop that lid off. Okay. Quite sure if I'm supposed to get that stuff on my hands, but I better wash it off just in case. Probably would be better not to because it barely even washed off. But nonetheless, let's get back to uh, to great foaming. And you know what we've completely forgot to do? <laughs> we've completely forgot to drill the hole for uh, for wherever the water is going to fall out of this thing. Okay. Through there boy get through there there you go okay let's get one more good look from the top get my head in there just to prove that I'm looking from the top hmm and you see that little hole right there we're gonna fill in that space so that nothing can crawl in there and kind of just hide out and sit in there forever so otherwise everything's looking pretty good everything seems pretty sealed up and with all that said I'll see you when the spray foam dries we'll get back in here we'll start to carve things out will bring this thing to life even more. Now for you, it's only gonna feel like a few moments, but in reality, it's been a little while. All of our expanding foam down in here has been, uh, you know, curing, if that's what you wanna call it. It's been puffing out, it's been expanding. You can tell because if you squish it, it sort of doesn't really go in anymore. It's finally time to flip this thing up and to get into here with a blade and start carving out some of this great expanding foam that we sprayed all in here. And what we're actually trying to do here is we're trying to get rid of all of this shiny stuff. Not only are we trying to carve the foam, but we're trying to, you know, just as a good rule of thumb, we're trying to get rid of all of this shiny stuff. I'm trying to do this one-handed for you. I don't know if I'm doing a very good job. This is a very tedious part of the process. One thing I want to remind you of in this moment, when you're spending hours and hours, you know, cleaning off the walls of your uh, of your new vivarium, is that this is creation that we're doing right here. This is it. So my best advice is just to enjoy the moment, to enjoy the fact that you get to sort of carve this little thing out, to enjoy the fact that your hand is part of every little inch that you're creating in something like this. And then just kind of let your mind go and just, you know, do it for a while. I just want to show you this little cave-like kind of piece of the terrain that I've created down here. So again, once we get all this cleaned out, it'll be a little bit more obvious, but this is gonna be where all the water is. So since this is a vivarium, we're gonna have a little water portion, and then we're gonna have, you know, plants and everything kind of going up aerially into this thing. But I think that's gonna do it for this step. Just a whole lot of getting in there, taking the blade, carving stuff out, making it look a little bit more rustic. We've still got one more step to go, but before we actually get to the step of finishing the actual background here, I've gotta get in here. We've got to clean all this mess up so we can actually see what we've been uh, what we've been working towards, what we've been doing. All nice and cleaned up. See most of the foam had kind of fallen down into that front area, which is going to be where the uh, where the water is, but overall, I think everything's looking pretty good. I think it's starting to come together. First, you glove up, because that's just the way to do it. Look at my hands, because I didn't glove up from yesterday. They're covered, I can't get this off, it's crazy. Let's grab our black silicone. Let's rip this little bit little off from yesterday. Let's get her primed up. Wait till we get a little glob coming out. And then let's dive back over to that GoPro. Very, 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 I'll say very even one more time. Very liberal, very liberal amount of silicone. That means a lot. What I'm using to actually stick onto this background is I bought a bunch of like cocoa fiber bricks and I didn't add any water or anything to them. So I've got this kind of, you know, really fibrous sort of stuff. And then I'm gonna mix in a bunch of my it's just like a, it's a bunch of peat moss. It's a bunch of sphagnum moss. It's just kind of my, my OG terrarium soil that I've been using for a while. So it's just kind of a nice mix. But before we jump into any sort of sticking anything to the background, we've got to get in there with our fingers. We got to smear it all around, all over that background. We got to make a nice, sticky, very liberal uh, background so that we can, we can fluff all that stuff that we just mixed up onto there. 
you don't want to get too much on the wooden stuff, but you know, for the most part, you just want to get into every little crack and crevice because this is just going to be the glue that holds on all the, uh, all the stuff that we're about to put in here. But one other thing that I will say about this silicone is that if you get it on the glass, it's no big deal. You just take a razor blade, you kind of shave it off. Are my, are my eyes watering from the fumes? Basically what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take one big old hand of, you know, texture, <laughs> and I'm just gonna throw it all over the background here. Everything that we created, I'm gonna pat it all over the place. Basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to add just some natural, just a natural organic texture to everything. Think about it, you're never going to get to do this to your terrarium or your vivarium or your ecosystem or whatever you're creating again. And this is the, this is the most intimate time, as kind of strange as that sounds. When you're done creating this thing, you get to be proud, you get to love it, you get to know that your fingers, that your mind, that everything you are was involved in, uh, in creating this little slice of, uh, you know, in my case it's going to be a rainforest, a little slice of heaven in the plant room here. You know those like dino excavation toys that you see where the kids have to get in there and kind of chip away to find the uh, the fossils? Well, that's what we're doing here. Periodically, we come in here with a shop vac and we suck it all up. And now it's just going to be a matter of walking by this thing a few times going by, doing a little detail work, cleaning things out slowly but surely. This is one of those processes that just kinda, you just have to sorta wait for it and do it. Okay, it's a brand new day. Everything's had time to sit and marinate. I've primped, I've prodded. I've gone through the terrarium here. I've made all of the little intricate, you know, artistic little, little details that you do. And one other thing that I'm finally also ready to do is trim this long tube that I've been just kind of, I didn't know what to do with it all, so I wanted to make sure I had enough length to go anywhere in the uh, terrarium here. But now we're finally going to take this, we're going to trim it right at the top here. Hopefully that works. We'll be testing this waterfall in just a second. Let's give this thing a good spray. Let's wash everything. That might be on this background. Let's plug this pump in. Then I'll quickly turn you around for a POV shot so you can see how it's all actually flowing and hopefully water's not squirting all over my uh, wall back there. Here we go. Exactly as I was expecting, water would pour down through here. I love how it's coming down through that little hole. Everything's perfect. Everything's looking good. No leaks around the edges of the tank. It's been running for... I've left it running for about an hour or so right now. So one thing that we're going to do right before we get to actually planting everything is I'm just going to use some, you know, basic sand for the bottom of this stuff. And then maybe what we can do for the upper layers is just a little bit of, uh, a little bit of gravel because it's not so light. I bought this plant because of the red vibrant color that it had and I wanted this to sort of be the centerpiece of this uh, of this vibrarium back here. So maybe let's do this one first. Okay. Got some sphagnum moss, got that thing shoved right back into the corner there. It's our first plant, what do you think? I do want to put one nice clump of this thing right back into this. There's a little hole there's a little hole right back here that's almost hidden that I want to just shove this into. Now let's move on to a little bit of our moss. I initially thought I was going to use mostly this for this project, but now that I'm looking at it, I think I'm going to use mostly just like a generic sheet moss type thing. The best part about this moss is you can basically just stick it into every little corner, every little crack or crevice that you think might be a suitable place. Go ahead and shove a little bit of, of moss in there. Moss going right down to the bottom. 
Anyways, now I want to put another little sprout of our dragon's tongue somewhere. I think right in here, right in this little side pocket would be nice. I think the last thing that we really need for this vivarium is a little bit of this ficus pumila right here. And the best part about this stuff, you can just take cuttings of it and then plant it wherever you want. So I am going to take this one. Maybe we'll start at the very top, right up here under the moss. And then what I like to do with my pumila is seal it down with a little bit more moss on top. And there we are, we've got us a perfectly planted tank, or at least what I think is a perfectly planted tank. A good thing to start out with anyways. You can almost barely see it dripping into the bottom and that's exactly how I wanted this thing. Just a beautiful kind of dripping rainforest scene. Uh, always the nerve wracking part. Mm Not sure if you're hearing that weird sound in the background. I'm sorry, I have absolutely no idea what that is. That spritzer wasn't enough. I've got even one more surprise for you. I told you from the beginning of this ecosystem build, this vivarium build, that we were going to be bringing this thing to life, that it was going to be full of life. We're going to get to these in just a second. But first, first let's start with an important aspect to any bioactive terrarium, vivarium, whatever you want to call it. As long as it's bioactive, you're going to need some of this stuff. So right in here, these are called dwarf isopods. I'm not even sure if you're going to be able to see any of them. There you go. A couple little dwarf isopods in there. And that, my friends, is how you make an ecosystem bioactive by throwing some dwarf isopods in there right from the get-go. Next up on the list, these are blue springtails. And they're a little bit difficult to see. See those little white, see those little white specks swimming around in the black sludge there. Well, that is the springtails. And now for the best addition of all. If you thought those isopods were exciting, or if you thought those springtails were even more exciting, well, my friends, you're going to think this next one is even more exciting. I'm going to POV you. That's how excited I am about it. And this is a morning gecko. One of three that's going to live in this ecosystem behind us. That's going to hopefully enjoy the little slice of rainforest that we created for it. I'll go with you. Since you're, uh, you're already anxious to get out of this thing, it seems. Okay. I want to be really careful because these guys can jump. There you go. See him crawling up over the side there? There he goes. Into the back corner. And for a new spot right behind the wall. <laughs> well, hopefully you don't stay there too much. Let's close this door before you get any ideas. Whoa. See this little guy just leap onto the glass? Whoa! He's leaping down to the bottom. Holy moly! I think he's excited to be in his new, uh, in his new little domain here. He is again, poking his little head over the side. Come on, buddy, move! I want to get your friend in. What you doing? Just being curious? Let's just. Whoa! 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 whoa. Be careful because that last guy tried to escape on me. You're almost to freedom. There you go. Okay. Two of them in there. Got one right there. Crawling up on that little bromeliad. Got another one down there on the other bromeliad. Make sure we keep the door closed. And I think I'm going to do this last one with two hands just by myself. Just to make sure we don't lose any of these guys. I had such a close call. With the, uh, with the first two already. See that little guy? Hanging right by the door there. See him? There he is. If 
you enjoyed this build and if you want to do something similar to this build I've actually made a list of all of the different products and all of the different things all of the different stuff that it took for me to actually put this thing together so check down in the description you can see a big list of all the stuff that I used to actually you know build this sort of thing but most of all the most important part of building something like this isn't all of the stuff that you have to buy it isn't even the little geckos that you pick up from your local reptile store but what a project like this really takes is it takes a little bit of creativity and it takes a little bit of willingness to get out of the way of mother nature and just kind of let her tell your hands what to do and best of all if you want to see more of this stuff stay tuned with me because not only do i have some projects in the works not only do i have some projects stirring around in my head already but i've even got <laughs> some big projects already sort of you know coming together 